so glad that you joined me today. I can't believe it. We've wanted to do this for a long time because people want to ask questions and I get involved with you on the phone and in emails. And then there's always another phone or another email. And this is just for you and I and this special time and the questions that you want to ask. I'm going to tell you a little bit about me, although most of you already know. Hmm? Oh, can you hear me, guys? If you can, write yes. Oh, Deborah. Write yes in your little chat box, sweetie. And what we're going to do eventually when I figure out how to do all this, we're going to go live and we'll probably unmute. But for right now, we're going to ask, answer the questions in the box. As you probably all know, um, I've been a cancer survivor, wife, mother, maid, head to cat driver, all of the things that all of you out there do on a daily basis. We are the champions of the world, girls. They just don't know it. Not everybody yet. I'm a theater arts major, and what that means is that um, I should have an Oscar right now, but I don't. But I did have tons of fun. And it helped a foundation for where I am now. I know cosmetology. Most of what I've done with the wigs have been truthfully, I think, self-taught. You know, you can go to cosmetology school or you can be an apprentice. I'm old as dirt, so I was able to be an apprentice. And when you can do that, uh, you've got the basics. But then when you get to wigs, you know, it's a whole different ball game, and all of us know that. So I kind of think things up, and actually, my hairline, I actually dream. And then I start working and try to make it work. And sometimes I do, and sometimes I don't. I've been a businesswoman probably most of my adult life in some way or fashion. And um, you know that I'm a Christian. What does that mean? It means that I believe in my Lord and that he is the Lord of my life. Also, it means that we try to, to the best of our ability, run the business in a Christian principle. I will never lie to you knowingly. And leave my mouth, no new taxes, <laughs> God loving. I will never lie to you knowingly. Um, and sometimes that's tough, but that's the way it is. So now I'm a cancer survivor. I had colon cancer. And it was bad colon cancer. And, there, you know, I probably should have died. But I didn't. And some of you out there are facing that right now. And I don't know what to tell you except that um, get up, suit up, and show up. Um, you do the best that you can. And that was the inspiration for this. When I did live, and I knew deep down in my heart I was going to live, I knew that I was supposed to be one-on-one -on -one with women in need um, to give them encouragement, my, my skills, and, and whatever else I had learned in all these years. So we opened shop, and opened shop in my house, one-on-one, -on -one, and the doctor started sending me people, and, you know, it got to be bigger and bigger, and I'm going, holy moly. And then all of a sudden, I started getting this feeling that I was supposed to tell more women. I was supposed to be able to give my skills to more women. So. We came up with the idea of a website. I didn't even know how to get on a website you know, when we started. We started thinking about it in 2010, and I think we're about two years old now, and we're learning every day that we go. Why are we different? I know you're seeing this on your screen. I think we've already answered why we're different. Um, I didn't want to be a big business that you're only a number and I really don't have time to hear about your illness or your medicines or why or what. The customization truly is 
my own. I dreamed every bit of that. And you know what? It makes such a difference. I have a little tiny head. Wait, my meds, guys. i got to drink water. You know I've got a dry mouth. And all you guys out there are doing the same thing. So when I, what is that drinking game? You know, you click or something and take a drink of water. Anyway, uh, with the customization, it makes all the difference in the world because we will cut you a hairline. We will sew for you and fit you. There are so many wigs that aren't available to we petite girls. And if you give me your measurements, and especially a picture helps so much, we will customize for you. As of January, we have two types of customization. We have the regular customization that we have done all along, and we have the deluxe customization. Deluxe customization is what you would do if you would take your wig to the hairdresser and you'd say, I want to have full bangs, I want dirty bangs, I want layers, I want four inches cut off. If you're you know, pretty precise in your direction, and if you can uh, give us a picture or even a picture of what you'd like, then we'll go ahead and do that for you. So now let's go to the questions, the most important part. What's the first question? Where is it, darling? Oh, here it is. Oh, this is from Lori. Lori, I read this a few minutes ago, and I just cracked up. Wait till you hear this, girls. You're going to love this. I have more synthetic wigs than room to store them on individual styrofoam heads or even in individual boxes. I recently started to put two wigs together in a plastic container the size of a shoebox. Each wig has a hairnet and is wrapped individually in tissue paper. I also have tissue paper inside each wig. I put a few silicone gel packs in each container. The containers have lids and I stack them in my closet. I keep a few wigs out on heads and rotate them. But some wigs will probably stay in the plastic container for a few months at a time. Do you think this storage procedure is okay? Oh, Lori, I love you to death. Do pigs make bacon? Sweetie, you should write a book on how to store wigs. I think that's absolutely wonderful. I had a woman once who, they had a two-bedroom uh, apartment or condominium, whatever. And her husband didn't know she was buying all these wigs. And one day she called and I, I made a home trip because she wasn't feeling very well. And I went into her bathroom and we were going to work on the wigs. And she said, do you want to know where my wigs are? And she opened her shower curtain and across the tub she had placed all these uh, pieces of wood. And she must have had 20 wigs stacked in there. And her husband never went in her bathroom so he had no idea. But your idea is much better, Lori. Okay, Tina. I am new to synthetic wear wigging. How can I make it more comfortable? For instance, the wig always feels itchy on my head. I'm afraid if I wash it, it won't look good anymore. Sweetheart, one of the best things about a synthetic wig, I think the top thing, is that synthetic wigs have memory. And it's baked in from the factory. When you design a wig, you tell them what inches you want, what curl pattern, and so forth. And then in the factory, they put these lines, they're called wefts of, of, your, plast, of your synthetic wig, and they heat it to whatever pattern that they're doing. Then they sew it all together. It's incredible. But what that means, that fiber has that wig has that memory, and it will stay there as long as the wig is alive. Uh, sometimes our wigs get dry and tired, and you know they need to go to wig cemetery. But most of the time, we can refurbish them and make them good. If the wig always feels itchy on your head, that can be a few reasons for that. One is if you are in chemotherapy and you are losing your hair. While you are losing your hair, your head is going to be tender, it is going to itch, it's going to be sore, and even a hat will hurt it. And that only happens while you're losing your hair. So uh, as soon as your hair is all gone, it's going to fall out, 
your head doesn't itch or hurt at all. Another reason might be that there's some little piece of fabric that's rubbing against your head. We have a wig cap, and it's called a cotton wig cap, and it's ribbed, and it has the seam right across the middle. And what you want to do with the cotton wig cap, it comes in light and it comes in a dark brown. You want to put it on your head with the seam on the outside going across the top of your head like a uh, mohawk haircut. That little Egyptian cotton ribbed goodie on your head is like your buffer. Then you put the wig on, and no one can really see it, but it does help you. So you can try that, and definitely grab the bull by the horn fade, look on the website. I even do videos on how to wash your hair, and go for it, Tina Marie. I know you can do it. Okay, Diane, you're next. This is so fun. I try not to read these before because I really want it to come right out of my heart and my head. I was wondering what handheld steamer you would recommend. I've seen some on the internet, but wondering if they would be appropriate. Also, do you need to wet the wig before steaming, or when styling, can you use it on dry hair? If I had to say one tool that I am working on every day and night, I'm looking on the website, I'm thinking, I'm talking to designers. I am going to come up with a steamer for you guys that will work properly. I'm telling you, it's hard as heck to find them. Sometimes they don't heat good. Sometimes they heat too much. One that I use, believe it or not, is um, I think it's QVC. Her name is Joy Mangiano, like Mangiano or something. I think she's the queen of households. And she sells my little steamer. I think it's about $30 or $35. They have a little mini one, and then they have a great big one. That little My Little Steamer is really good. It has a click on and off button, and it's not so strong that it'll blow your hair, your wig across the table. I've tried so many, and if they're, just don't even think about them. If they're on the floor, or if they say they're going to clean your stove, and they're going to clean your route, your route or whatever that is, Honey, if you get that one, I tried it, and I had it on my, my uh, little head, on my little stand, and I'll be dipped. I promise you, the whole thing went flying across the table because it was really strong. So get a, a, my little steamer. It's the first thing. I'm working feverishly. I hope in the next few months we'll have something for you. Uh, then you ask something about what? Oh, you need to wet the wig before you steam. No. You want to do it dry. Most of the time, the steamer itself will make it um, a little bit damp or a little bit wet. Try not to get it too wet. But when, if you want to know the steamer in styling or if you want to know the steamer to take out the frizz, go to my YouTube channel, which is at the icon at the top of my home page, and it says YouTube. And I actually have several videos on it showing you exactly how to use the steamer to take the frizz out. And then how to use your curling rods or whatever to put the curl back in. If you want to make your wig dead straight, you can do that with the steamer by just going it over and over and over. And it probably will become wet at that time. But remember this, the steamer will set your hair. When I steam those little hairlines around, or when I steam the bangs to go poof a little bit and then make them spindly or whatever, please remember, when you steam it, you set it, that's your new memory. It's just like heat defining. Oh, and um, I've got, I lost my place. Just a minute. And when styling, can you use it on dry hair? Absolutely, yes. That's what I want you to use it on dry hair. I want you to go to the uh, website today and go to our videos and go to our go to Zara because we put a new video up on Zara showing you 
the absolutely straight one that we call Emily, and then the regular Zara as it comes out of the package. That was all done with a steamer. I hope I say your name right, sweetie. Is it Sagita? If it isn't, it should be. I think that's just beautiful. Sagita, I would like to ask a question about wigs becoming dry on the ends. I have three wigs that I purchased on Wigs by Patty's Pearls about two or three months ago. Two of them are longer wigs. Longer wigs are harder, that's true. And you say, however, the ends are looking very dry and they tangle very easily. Also, they're feeling a little frizzy. So what do I need to do so the ends are not dry looking and would feel like when I took it out of the box? This is very, very common, especially with synthetic wigs and heat defiant wigs because the only thing that can damage your synthetic wig is heat. Heat caused by high temperature, by putting your head in the oven. Heat caused by uh, using a hot roller that's really, really hot and not way, way down, like 175. Um, all of those things will tangle your hair, especially the long hair. If you've ever had real long hair that you owned on your head, don't you remember how it used to get tangled in the back? And you'll see girls that will go in the back of their neck and they'll kind of flip their hair when it's real long. What they're doing is kind of detangling it. Well, the same thing happens with your long synthetic wig. As it rubs against your back and your clothing and so forth, it does have a tendency to get tangled. Do you have to go home every night and grab your steamer and all that kind of stuff and blah, 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 blah? No. I want you to get our detangler. And I think I actually have this on a website. When you get the detangler and you take, let's say, Zara, and you take Zara off, and you're either in your bathroom or you're in the kitchen, I want you to turn it over so that you're looking down at the back of your wig. And from the nape of the wig cap all the way down, you're going to see that it's tangled. Dang, dang, dang. you got too much to go. You're, you're going out for dinner, blah, blah, blah. You spritz the detangler on, and I suggest that you use, for all of this, that SD Smoother Detangler. When John came out with that, it was like a miracle. It solved so many problems. So while you've got your Zara, and it's on the kitchen or bathroom counter, and you've got it all spread out, I want you to to spray that detangler smoother on the back of the wig. Don't get it stopping wet. Start at the ends and work your way up. Now here's the secret. I want you to put your hand on the wig cap. I want you to take your other hand, probably your right hand, and I want you to use a really wide tooth comb to begin with. And we're starting at the very bottom of the wig. And you're going to go up maybe two inches or so and comb that smoother detangler through those tangles, and it will smooth it. Then go up a few more inches and comb down. Do not start at the top of the nape of the wig, you know, where the wig start, where the hair starts coming out from the wig cap. Don't go there and just pull the sucker, because what happens is the wig fiber paints. And many of you who have worked with wigs for a long time, you'll know what I mean. When you pull that fiber, that synthetic fiber, with the comb, and you're pulling a lot of pressure, when you let it go, some of those fibers are going to go bing, and when they do, they make those little bitty curls, and it's more tangled. So go gently, little bit at a time, until you get up to the base of the cap, and then you go with a little smaller comb, and now it should be better. That should last you for a few days. Don't put so much detangler on that it's going to make your wig kind of gummy or dirty. Just try a few strips at a time. And let's see, what else could you say? Oh, yeah, they tangle and they feel a little frizzy. That's from the friction and from the heat. 
So another thing I want you to do, after you've used the detangler and you've done it on the back, then you flip your Zara over and you're going to do it on the top. Usually the back is where it gets so tangled because it's getting against your skin. The next thing that you can do is get the wig luster. And that's almost like the argan oil or the Moroccan oil for human hair. I love the luster. You just use a little bit at a time, and I want you to put it on your fingers, and I want you to start at the bottom of the wig where it's dry looking. For your information, all of you, synthetic hair is a flat surface. Human hair, on the other hand, is porous. So when you have your synthetic wig and it's a flat surface, it has been treated, et cetera, et cetera, at the factory. And you get it, and it feels so soft. What happens as you're wearing it and the elements and all this and that, and you can tell when it gets a little dirty because it's not going to act the same, that means that some of that coating has worn off of that fiber. Think of that fiber as a cashmere or silk. And whatever you're going to do to your cashmere or your silk blouse especially, when you iron or get your silk blouse hot, you're going to use low, low heat. And then the big secret is you're going to let that fiber, what, cool before you put the blouse on. Trust me, I'm always running late. And I'll press that blouse because I'm a southern girl. Everything has to be pressed, you know. So I press that blouse. And then I put it on, and by the time I got to the front door, it was a wrinkled mess. Why? Because that fiber wasn't cool. Same thing when you're working with the wig. So I want you to use your um, detangler, the smoother detangler. I want you to use the luster to get the tangles and the dryness out. Then you ask, could you take it a professional salon to cut the wig to fit my face? Um, it's if you've got a human hair wig, I think that that's just fine. If you have a synthetic wig, I think you need to ask them if they have worked with synthetic wigs before. There's a special way that I cut synthetic wigs. I don't try to shatter the ends. Remember, this is a flat surface. I want to cut it, but I don't want to make it a mess on those ends. You can shatter by styling, but when you're cutting, I don't want you to do that. And I, I do razor, but when I razor, I make it wet. So I think the smartest thing for you to do, Pumpkin, is to um, ask the stylist if she's comfortable with that. If she isn't and, you, and you've got the wig from us, you can always call us. And I've had so many girls that they send it back with their picture or a picture of what they want it to look like. And I think we're pretty darn good at hitting it spot on. OK, Christy, I love this one. Your, your first line is great, babe. First, I just wanted to say I love Miss Patty's videos. Thank you very much, Christy. You, you're wondering if I would tell you the difference between colors HRH14 and 10RH16 especially as they pertain to the Zara wig. When looking at the swatches of these colors, they look very familiar, for me, I mean similar. But in the pictures of these wigs, they look so different. Um, it's usually in the eye of the beholder, but I'd just like to give you a little bitty hint about colors, because I really think that colors are, are tough. And that's why we started sending out swatches and, you know, we'll, we'll pay you back if you return them or, or whatever. If, if you're going to wear wigs and you're going to have a wig wardrobe, which I usually prefer to as three, one for every day, one for good. If somebody calls you, you know, like if Elvis would wake up from the dead and call me, trust me, babe, I put the good one on. Or one for when you go to the beach or you're going to go watch your son play soccer or whatever. So getting back to what I was saying, in the colors, one is blue, blue, black. All the way up is 60, and that's white. That is your basic colors. And they go by twos. It would be one, 
two, four, six. Six is fun spindle. Then you get eight. It's a little wider. Ten is your lovely medium brown. So if you know those colors and you see that stretch of the color wheel, you're going to know immediately when you see these colors, hmm, eight is lower than ten. So this eight is going to be uh, darker. And then your ten is going to be lighter. But I agree with you. They're very, very close. Ten is kind of your middle of the road medium brown. Eight is a little bit darker. Now you're going to go to 14 and you're going to go to 16. RH means rooted and highlighted. When you go to the colors, I, I actually have it on the website what all those legend uh, letters mean. So if you see 8 RH 14, Knowing a little bit about the wigs, you're going to go, okay, 8 is kind of a darker brown, and 14 is definitely darker than the 16. So 14 is going to be a little bit lighter brown. It's going to be brown on brown. When you get to 16, it's a little step lighter, and you're heading toward your blonde. That's going to be a little ashy. So to answer your question, bang, 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 your 8RH14 is going to be a beautiful, I call it dark medium brown, with some lighter brown in it, and it's very rich looking. The 10RH16 is your medium brown, and your 16 is almost jumping into the blonde pool, but it's going to be a little bit ashy. Some, on some girls, the 10RH16 can actually look kind of gray, and we don't want you to do that. But if you've got a really great warm uh, face color and your color is more warm, the 1016 can really look great. Okay, what is that top question? What is the difference between the J.R. Armand and the Zara other than the lace front? When you're saying J.R. Armand, baby, oh, it's Amanda. I'm sorry, Deborah. Amanda, I love you. Okay, Amanda is a lot thicker. Amanda was uh, is a little bit older wig, so that's why it doesn't have the front lace. And it's a little thicker. And for some girls who really, really like a thicker wig, I will suggest the Amanda as opposed to the Zara. Both are long. Both are beautiful. The Zara, of course, does have the lace front with the monotop, and the Amanda does not. I hope that helps you a little bit. And then, How to Make a Synthetic Wig Soft Again by Jennifer. Well, I think we talked about that before. You know, you're going to use your detangler, and you're going to use your luster. And if it still isn't soft, make sure, Pumpkin, you're using conditioner. I talk to so many women, and they kind of just bypass the conditioner because they say, I don't need it. Because there have been rumors out there, you know, that you can use uh, uh, nice and soft and some of those detergents to do your hair. Please don't, don't, don't. Use the shampoo and the conditioner made. Remember how I told you synthetic wig, Deborah, is flat, and then when you wash it, you're kind of decoding that fiber. You're getting it clean with the shampoo. You must use the conditioner to recoat that fiber to make it soft. And if you're missing that part, any of you listening to this, it'll make a huge difference. I mean, it'll make a multitude of difference. So synthetic wig. What are you going to need to take care of it? I mean, to really do it right. You're going to need shampoo. You're going to need conditioner. You're going to need that detangler, uh, smoother detangler. You're probably going to need the luster. And then if you want to, you want to use hairspray, use the synthetic hairspray. And we now have a synthetic gel spritz where you can make it look wild as heck, you know, like you're going to go boss or something. I don't know. But all of those together 
are there for a reason. And if you're going to wear wigs a lot, it's almost like God love her that's the cutest dress, but she forgot to fit it. The waist is too big, the bust is too tight, and, and it looks rough and wrinkled. Your hair is the same way, Tarkin. You buy the hair. You buy the best hair you can possibly buy. I believe I have that. You buy the best wig that you can afford, that you can possibly buy. Then you buy the products to take care of it. Your wig will last months and months longer. I hear people say, especially wig owners, wig shop owners and wig people, and they'll say, oh, you need a wig every three months. Well, you don't. If you get the, the products and you take care of your wig, you don't have to replace it. I have women that we take really good care of their wigs and, you know, they're wearing them for a year or two. Okay, what's the next question, Duncan? I have to bend over to see this because, you know, I'm bald as a bat and I'm blind. Let's see. I'm very thin on top and I wear a clip-on hairpiece, but at the speed of hair loss, I eventually will be in a wig. My husband bought a good wig for me to try, but honestly, I must say that it is just too hot. I immediately get hot all over, like a long-lasting hot flash. Oh, dear God, have we all been there? Bless your heart. My question is, what kind of wig would I be able to wear that is cool enough? Um, Probably, Glenda, the, I think the, the shorter you go, I think um, it's cooler because it's not on your back. However, I love to get long wigs and then you pull them up in the back because remember I cut those little hairs even in the back so they'll hang down and then you clip it up. Nobody dreams you have a wig on if you clip it up, if you put a headband on, if you put a comb in it or a flower in it, or whatever. But that's just not done, you know. But i got to tell you something. Make a messy wig and nobody knows you got it on. Put something in it, a flower, a barrette, or whatever. Nobody dreams you have a wig on. Now, for being hot, there is a, a product out, and it's called Headliner. And this precious girl had the same problem that you did. It's a piece almost looks like a nun's cap or something and you put it inside your wig and it wicks away the perspiration. That is something. Some women like to wear, and that will be on the website, some women like to wear the cotton little wig cap I was telling you about because it gets wet, you wash it out in the sink at night, throw it in the dryer, it will it'll go back up to its shape again because you know cotton stretches. And that absorbs the perspiration. The most thing that I do, I wear Osolite. I wear the wigs. And when you're bald, I go out and I can actually feel the coolness on my head. So those are, those are a few things that I can think of. If, if you still have trouble, uh, give me a call, Precious. And, you know, we'll, we'll try to find something else for you, Belinda. Also, like we that we designed were especially made. When we designed them, we talked about, um, of course, my heart was where the cancer woman was, because that's where I was standing. And they are less than 2.5 ounces. They're all open. They're lightweight, and they're wonderful. So if you have problems with being hot, Glenda, look at the Osolite line on the website. How to see your signature wigs online, Jennifer. Honey, what does that mean? How to see your signature? Oh, you mean those other ones that I know, like I did the Zara. Well, that's a good question, and we'll talk about that. Maybe I should do some YouTube. You know, I, I don't want to get into trouble with um, my suppliers that, that I buy from and then in turn give to you. However, I want to show you what you can do with them. I know many of you have bought over email because they're not on the, on the YouTube. I mean, they're not on the website. But I can put them on YouTube and you can look at them there. So we'll talk about that and we'll make sure we come up with something to show you our signature. Jennifer, uh, what process do you use to refurbish wigs to bring them back to life? Huh. 
refurbishing, I think we charge like forty dollars. If it's longer, we we charge more. What we do is we steam the wig and take all the frizz out and take it right back to virgin hair. Then we wash it a couple of times. Then we soak it in the uh, some um, the conditioner and we let it sit there for a long time in the conditioner. Then, after we've done all that, we have to recurl it and make it like new again. And for girls who have done the refurbishing, it's absolutely a miracle <laughs> what we can do. And if we look at it and we say, oh, dear God, pumpkin, I don't think, uh, you know, St. Peter himself is going to help that one. We'll call you and tell you that. I had one woman, I swear to the truth, she walked into the salon and she said, I have a real problem. I, I didn't put any hot heat on this, but look at it. It's in a ball. It's a mess. I said, well, how did you dry it, sweetie? And she said, well, I put it in the dryer, but I put it on that no heat, and it's just a ball. And you know what I told her? Get out your checkbook, baby, because there's nothing that can do with this one. So if that's the process, and if that happens, I'll tell you. Okay, uh, where are we are? Oh, are we, Carolyn? <laughs> you know what? I think this is so much fun, but I think if we're going to do this again or whatever, I really have to have you talking back to me. I feel like I'm talking to, I'm, well, every time we see your names, I know these girls. But sometimes I think we're going to open it up so you all can talk too. But let me get through these questions because I want to help you. Let's see, Carolyn, you said, can I wear a monotop if I have some hair? Will the part look right? Do I have to wear a wig cap with it? I try not to wear them because they just make me hotter. I absolutely know what you're talking about. I have seen some girls that they have a monotop and they have a little bit of hair, and we will make the part on the monotop and then They'll go down into their hair and they'll make their part the very same way and then spritz it with um, their own hair with uh, hairspray and then that part will stay. The truth of it is I've never noticed that. Maybe it's because I'm bald, but usually when you look down, the, the part on the monotop is, is smaller and you just don't notice that. But if it does bother you, then I want you to make a part in your monotop and make a part on your hair the same place. And then when you, um, you can either take your it stays on your head and glue the, the hair, you'll know, rub that uh, it stays over it and it'll stay glued when you put the, the um, monotop wig on or just hairspray it and it will stay. So when you put the wig on, the wig part and your hairline part will coincide. Hi, Karen. If a particular style wig is a style that you love, but it is too short, can you have a longer wig style the same? Most of the time, I can. It really depends on if the factory, um, how do I explain this without getting too if the factory that has made the wig that we want to cut uh, teased enough and the webs are going, the wetting is going the same way as the short wig. Let me explain that. When you put the wetting on the ribbon, before it even gets to the ribbon to become a wig, there are these wonderful little men and women that take this little metal comb and they knit it. And they go, doo, 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 kind of like um, teasing, but not really like that. Much, much, much smaller. Then they date that in. Now they've got this permit tease or this little teasing that is guiding that hank of hair to go either under or over or whatever. Then how they sew that westing on your ribbon makes it go up into a flip or down into a um, page boy. So if you're wanting to do that, uh, send us an email and tell me what would you like to have shortened but a little bit longer, and I'll tell you if we can do it or not. Uh, you, let's see, Diane again. 
I missed where to find a video about Zara. Oh, dear Lord, I've got videos about Zara all over the place. Go to my website. Oh, we are going to put it in? You're going to put it in the answer chat box? Okay. He's going to type it in the chat box so you'll see it. But go to the website and then go to Zara. And if you look down below Zara, we have all kinds of um, videos. I think there are about seven now. And you'll be able to see what we did with the Zara. And then if you want to try to replicate that, that's when you go to my YouTube videos and how to defrizz and how to change the style of a wig. Okay, let's see, Susan. I bought a wig online and I love it, but it's too tight and gives me a headache. Is there anything I can do? Well, when you measure your head, when you measure your head, I want you, if it's over, if it's over 23 inches circumference length, or if it's really, really tight, what we do is we add elastic. And um, I actually cut the, the circumference of your wig at the nape in the back. And then I spray check it and glue it. And then I make a piece of elastic to match that, put it in that base, and sew it. I'm giving you all my secrets. But you know what? I said that from day one. I'm not going to keep secrets because you guys need to know all that I know. That's why I make all the videos. So I'm telling you now, if it's too tight, even if it's too tight up at the top, what happens when you add elastic around the circumference but at the knee, what happens is it releases the wig and it drops down. So when you add that elastic, I want you always to be sure to get a little product called spray check. Spray check is that any sewing store, notions, or whatever, it dries clear. But it keeps you from spraying your elastic. So you sew that elastic and then get the spray check, and it won't fall out on you. If you want me to do a, a, a video on that and show you how to do it, I'll be happy to do it for you. So just email me and, and let me know. Okay, where are we now, darling? Um, Susan. And you say, I bought wigs online that look great on the website, but they don't look well on me. If I sent you a photo, could you suggest a wig for me? You know, we do that all day long, Pumpkin, and uh, sometimes it's a hit and miss, and that's why we've extended our exchange program. I, I can't imagine having an exchange program for 10 days or two weeks when sometimes, you know, it takes me that long to get the wig. And then I'm supposed to return it back and make up my mind and everything. Well, I saw that that wasn't working. So we had a meeting, and we decided we changed our exchange program so that you can have 30 days and two, I think at least two free exchanges for 30 days, and you still get the sale price. So if we have a sale for 33 to 35 or 40. Well, we only do 41. You know, you can't have the 40 right now. Black right. Anyway, and and then you see, oh, it's the wrong color. Da, 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 da. Then you can exchange it for 30 days and still get your sale price. So sending a photo is a really good job. And um, I tell you, I've done the same thing in my searches and in my testing and so forth. I bought wigs online, and I'm telling you, that girl looked like a million bucks, and I thought, oh gosh, if I get that wig, I'm going to look uh, 30 again, and all my wrinkles are gone, and all my weight is gone, and boy, this is going to be great. And then I get the wig, and I put it on me, and it actually looks like, you know, somebody got a pig and ran it through my head. Um, so I think the best thing is to do the best you can. Send us a photo. We try desperately to use real women, even me, and show you what the wigs look like out of the box. I'm not going to have five stylists come in and change everybody's makeup and, and hire these girls that make $500 an hour 
and they're wonderful models, and I think that's great. But not everybody's a model. Okay, I find that my little schema by Joy Mangiano can be found on HSN, not QBC. Thank you, Diane. I, I know that it is on HSN, and I probably said QBC. Thank you, Pumpkin. I appreciate it. Let's say that again, guys. Even if you go to Joy Mangiano, you'd probably find her. But go to HSN and get the miniature one and try it. What we have now that I use is I went to um, I went to a plumber guy and I gave him this long story and batted my eyes and smiled. Didn't mean a darn thing, but I told him, you know, my problem and so forth. And he actually took the Joy Manjano schema and he filled up all the holes. Then he drilled one hole and put a long piece of plastic a tubing. So now I have a steamer that you can put that little plastic tube in and actually draw your hairline or draw a few hairs with steam. It's not going to put out a big shot of steam. We're working on that, and if our steamer, if and when it comes out, it will have little plastic tubes so you can be more precise. Um, how to use the wig luster by, oh, I hope I say your name right, honey, Sidita. It sounds so beautiful. How do you use a wig luster? It, it comes in a spray. It comes in a small bottle. I think it's like a two ounce. And the reason it does is because I don't want you using a lot of it. A little bit goes a long way. Do you all remember that commercial for Alberto V05? I'm showing you how old I really am. And they always say, a little dab will do you. Well, this will do a little dab. And what the smartest thing to do, truthfully, is kind of put it on your fingers, put it on the end, and then just go boom, just like one little spritz, and then you'll see your luster come back. And speaking about luster, some of you women say that when you buy your wig, especially your blondes, they're too, too shiny, too, too shiny. Well, we have a little powder puff on the website, it's red and it's adorable. And it has powder in it, white powder. And you can tap that on your blonde wig and then brush the excess powder out and it won't be as shiny. That's one way. The other way is just to wash it a few times. And as the wig gets a couple of washes under its belt, it's not nearly as shiny. It's, it's kind of like um, when I buy my bras, you know, they always hurt when you put them on. But then you put them in the washing machine and soften them up a little bit, and they work great. It's the same thing with your wig. After you wash it a couple of times, I think it even works better. Sometimes, if I had the time, I'd wash every wig before I send it out. But I don't have time to do that. I'm sorry. Anybody got any other questions? Can I unmute it? Yeah, we're going to have to look at that. My, my, uh, my professional guy here. I don't even know any of this guy. You know I'm just playing it by ear. But he's gonna unmute the at the same time, guys. <laughs> Does cold affect the wind? No, no, it doesn't affect the wig pumping. In fact, the wig might keep your head a little bit warmer in the cold. So cold does not affect your wig. You can sit in the refrigerator if you want. However, um, heat does, as you know. But not heat from, a, from the furnace. Not heat from the sun. Not heat from, if you know, if you, if you go to your grandma's house and she's got the the furnace up to, uh, to 90 because she didn't have any, she didn't have any blood, that's not going to work hurt your wig. If you go out in the sun, if you wear the wig to the beach, it's not going to hurt your wig. However, if, if you put heat temperature like a hot curling iron or uh, the oven temperature, when I curl a synthetic wig, I use the very lowest temperature they have. I am working on also 
uh, curling irons that are easier for you to use. But if you have any kind of degree, what I want you to do is go to 175. That's the very lowest that you can use. And then um, from there, it won't freeze when you're straightening it or when you're curling it. So heat does affect it, cold doesn't. Oh, can I curl Zara by John or no? I'm so glad you asked this question, honey, because in all the videos I've done, I have forgotten, I think, to tell you this. When you are curling synthetic wig and you've got your little um, You've got your little curling iron, and you, you'll see it on the video when I show how to defrizz and recurl the Julia. It's on the YouTube. When you use your curling rod to make curls, I want you to use a rod size one size smaller. So if you want your big barrel curls and you're going to start and work your way down and make the curl, I want you to use the, not the great big two-incher, but go down to the one and a half. Try the smaller uh, curlers. And then, as you're holding the rod, you hit it with the seam, it will make a new memory, and your Zara will be curled. Down at the end are barrel curls all the way up. And, oh, after you refurbish. Yes, that's what we're talking about. Thank you. When you refurbish, if I refurbish it for you, it will come curled or straight however you want it. Um, if you want it to look exactly, say, say the um, Adriana, and you want the barrel curls back after we refurbish, then that's what we'll do. And then when you hold the curling rod on the, on the synthetic hair, then you hit it with the steam and let it dry. I usually count. One, two, three, four, five. I usually go to about 15 or 20. Then slowly pull the curling rod down. You got your curl. Got it? You know what? Is it time? My techie here says I'm up, up against the clock. Oh, wait, Margaret, let me help you. Let me help you first. I'll talk real fast. Isn't this fun? I think, I think we're going to have to buy more time because, because I don't know if they cut me off or what. Okay, I'm going to talk. My wigs are too thick in the front. I am afraid to thin them. How should I approach the thinning? Okay, Margaret, I want you to get a very small uh, um, thinning, thinning shear, one that's real tiny. I don't want the great big wide ones in between the, the little cuts of the thinner shears. I want it to be real small. And I want you to do it on an angle. And in going into the front, you hold the hair up. You take your small thinning shears. And you go into just a little piece at a time. And I want you to tap it because I want that thinning shear, unlike real hair, I want it to be as close to the base of the cap as possible. I want you to go all the way down, nothing like real hair, and clip it once and pull it out, and you're going to see a few hairs. Then you go to the next one, a little bit at a time, Tuncan, and you'll be able to thin it. Try to find thinning shears that are good. I don't want you to buy fantastic $100 ones because the the synthetic fiber isn't kind to my shears. I don't buy my $350 shears for the synthetic. Then try to get those little teeth that cut in only on one side. Don't get two sides, because then you're going to you know, get a lot. We want a little bit at a time, and then you go. OK, I'm talking about that. If I get cut off, just know I love your pieces, pumpkin. Let's see. Oh, oh, my clock, they give me a clock. I'll be good. Okay, I liked your recent post about face shape. It would be great if you could use different live people to show wigs on them in a video or on still photos. I love most of the wigs you wear, but I know my face shape is different from yours. Do you have any plans to do that? Well, I do now, Glenda. I think that would be great. 
And you know what? I do have clients that have different face shapes. And some of them might not want to go on, on a YouTube bald, but I wouldn't show them bald if they don't want to. I would never do that. We would just show you what the wig looks like that's perfect for them and their face shape. So we'll work on that too. Thank you for this webinar, Linda. Debbie says, Patty, this was great. I hope you do this regularly. It's like being part of a giant family, and it's just so helpful. You know what? We are going to do these websites every month. It's going to be Saturday with Patty. And uh, I would love a face shape video. Okay, Carolyn, we'll do it. Thank you, Lori. Thank you, guys. Anything you can think of, if it's before next month when we do this again, pumping, just email me. I try to get to all of them, even though I have so many women in my chair. But we love you, and I love the fact that you're supporting what we do. Um, it really does come from the heart, and we want you to feel that and know that. We really are kind of a family. And it's good because i got to tell you, I've been there. I've walked into places where everybody's beautiful, everybody has hair, and they try on 10 different people at, at the station, and, and they're all looking gorgeous, and I sat there with no hair. It's awful. And I won't do that to you guys. Have fun. Have a great weekend. Love you to pieces. Keep thinking of those questions. Have a great day. I'm down to a minute, 58, 57. Have a great weekend. Love you guys. Bye-bye.